Hey guys, it's Regina with Maximum Off Grid, and today I am going to be talking about hot water recirculating pumps. This is an extension of my article that you can find at www.maximumoffgrid.com, or you can click on the link below in the description that'll take you directly to that article. Today we're going to be talking about how a hot water recirculating pump works, the pros and cons to a hot water recirculating pump. Uh, a special note on using a hot water recirculating pump off grid, making your pump smart, and then we'll go into some in depth reviews on the best hot water recirculating pumps on the market. All right, let's go. So, we use quite a bit of water here in the United States. According to the USGS, we use 80 to 100 gallons per person on a daily basis. That is pretty darn high. And a lot of those gallons are wasted by waiting for your hot water to get hot. So all this wasted water that just runs down your drain costs a lot of money, let alone the whole thought of water conservation in general. If you're hauling in water into a cistern system, this gets even more costly and time consuming. There is a way to save all this water waste and you can simply install a hot water recirculating pump, which is really exciting. This drastically reduces the wait time for waiting for hot water by literally minutes. You get hot water instantly, maybe a two to three second wait out of the tap. How does a hot water recirculating pump work? Well, in a traditional water heater, the water in the tank gets pushed through the heat out pipe and it's a centralized system. So there is a more or less severe lag time of when that hot water reaches your faucet from the hot water heater. So the hot water recirculating pump works by installing the pump in line and keeping the water in the pipes hot. So essentially the hot water within the pipe circulates continuously and is ready to be released upon your demand. So as with everything on this planet, there are pros and cons. Nothing is free. Nothing is perfect. We all live in a state of checks and balances. So I am going to go over the cons first because there is one particularly glaring con that gets asked about a lot. And that con is higher electricity consumption. Since the hot water recirculating pump always holds hot water in your pipes, there will be an increase in your energy usage. Now I will note that this increase is not all that substantial, but it really depends on your system. If you're in a large house and you are constantly recirculating hot water through a bunch of pipe, it is definitely gonna take a toll on your energy bill. So there are some really easy remedies to this dilemma. And the first remedy is to place your pump on a timer. Timers are really affordable and super easy to install and many pumps already come with a built-in timer. So this'll turn your hot water pump off and on to when you set it. So another way to save this electricity waste is to add insulation to your pipes. If you did these two steps, installing the timer and adding insulation, your extra electricity consumption will be hardly noticeable to the tune of maybe 20 bucks a year. So another con is corrosion within the recirculating pipes. This corrosion is usually concentrated in bends and angles, and the only way to remedy this problem is to reduce angles in your piping or slow the flow with a lower capacity pump. Con number three is low flow. You may experience not enough pressure depending on the pump you buy, so make sure before you buy it to get the proper pressure you need. These pumps can sometimes have small motors which cannot provide the desired flow. Now onto the pros. The first obvious pro is on-demand hot water. You will get hot water instantly or practically instantly. Joy. Pro number two, another obvious one is less wasted water. Manufacturers claim up to 15,000 gallons per year, and that seems pretty optimistic to me. There has been studies that debate these savings, and some say only 500 gallons per year, which I think is ridiculously low, and others say 5,000 gallons per year, which sounds a little bit more accurate. In my experience of being a human on this planet, the truth usually falls somewhere in between. So you can expect to save between five to 10K gallons per year. I think that's pretty re reasonable expectation for a family of four. Uh, pro number three is super easy installation. You could pretty much install this on your own. There will be minimal tools involved. Pro number four is that it works great for large houses. 
I've read some accounts where people are waiting eight to 10 minutes to get hot water out of their pipes. If you're in a large house, you can have extreme savings in water and you will save heating costs as well if you do the proper steps such as putting your pump on a timer or installing insulation. Using a hot water recirculating pump off grid. I really feel that this type of pump can help out in an off grid situation where your water resources are scarce. However, you definitely will need to have your pump on a timer and even better yet a sensor if your system is not smart, you can easily deplete your solar electric resources. So a typical hot water recirculating pump takes an average of 30 watts to run per hour. So that can add up if left on consistently. If you have a 100 watt solar panel, that would eat up a third of its electricity output hour by hour, let alone what it's eating up at night when there is no electricity output. So I suggest making your pump as smart as possible to minimize energy consumption. I have written a guide on off-grid water pumps for ideas about using pumps for off-grid systems. You can check it out. I have a link below in the description. Making your hot water recirculating pump smart. Although many of these pumps come with a built-in timer, it just doesn't quite make the pump smart enough to limit your energy usage. So I recommend that you purchase a programmable Wi-Fi outlet. You can control this outlet with your smartphone to turn it off and on. You can set a timer for it, and you can also uh, share this timer with friends and family. All you got to do is plug it into the outlet that your hot water recirculating pump is going to plug into. Easy. They're really cheap, too. I wouldn't mind having this for several outlets in my home, for, especially for when I go on vacation. It would be really cool. The bottom line is that although it's not perfect, the hot water recirculating pump will save you tons of water. And if installed and managed properly, will not cost but a few bucks extra a month to run, if that. On to the reviews. So my top choice and first product is the Watts 5800 recirculating pump. So what I like about this pump is that it's very easy to install and it comes with all the included hardware you need. It will withstand hard water and is built to last for many years. And you will get hot water within five seconds of turning on the faucet. My criticisms are that it may not work with some water heaters and that includes tankless. Uh, lukewarm water out of the cold faucet happens for a few seconds. The timer is somewhat dated. So the Watts 5800 recirculating pump is my top choice because it's ready to go out of the box. There's no need to take a trip to the hardware store. It has high customer reviews for the quality of the product and many say that it'll last for years even in extremely hard water conditions. The pump does have a built-in timer, so you don't have to purchase that separately, and it runs really quiet. People say they can't even hear it running. This is an inline pump. It's not an under-sink pump, so you can install it right at the water heater or anywhere along the line. It just has to be installed on the main line from the water heater. A couple of things to know is that if there's a power failure, the timer will need to be reset. So this could be an inconvenience depending on where you install it on the line. That is why installing it into a smart outlet would be really helpful. Also take note that the pump is not compatible with all water heaters, mainly tankless water heaters and water heaters with heat traps, as there is an incompatibility with the nipple connectors on the trap. Don't even try to use this product if you have a heat trap because those nipple connectors do not come out. So some users have complained that it takes up to 30 minutes to heat the water through the return line when you are coming from a pump being shut off. So you need to plan in ahead when to turn your pump on. So if you get home at 5 and you like to take a shower at 5.30, just make sure that your timer is set for 30 minutes before your shower time. There will be some tepid water that comes through the cold faucet, and it just takes a few seconds to flush out, so don't worry. Unfortunately, there has been some complaints about the support for this pump, but typically they will follow up eventually. Just don't give up on them. <laughs> Overall, the Watts pump is a great choice. Just make sure that your water heater is compatible before you buy it. My second choice is the Lang recirculating pump. What I like about it is that it has a compact design so it fits nicely under the sink and into small spaces. It has a tiny power usage, only 14 watts of power. It has a built-in thermostat to regulate the temperature. My criticisms are is that the price is much more spendy than other pumps. There is lukewarm water out of the cold faucet for a few seconds as with any other recirculating pump and there are reports of broken impellers upon arrival. So the Lang pump is a nice choice because its compact design allows for easy installation under a sink. It's extremely quiet at only 30 decibels of sound. The manufacturer states that it'll eliminate up to 17,000 gallons of water per year for a family of four. And that is quite a lot of water. 
Although the pump is spindy, this model does have a built-in timer, which will save some money, and it also has a built-in thermostat that cuts the power off to the unit. That adds more to power savings. Estimates to run this pump are about $12 a year, which is totally reasonable. Users having trouble with faulty equipment have received excellent customer service and quick replacements. However, there has been reports of broken impellers within the unit, so make sure to inspect the components before you install it. Overall, the unit is very good for its compact design, excellent customer service, and built-in thermostat, but it is a more spindy pump. My third choice is a Grunfos Super Brute. The good things about this pump is that it's a very good value in relation to its quality. It's known to last for many years and it runs so quietly it's hard to tell that it's even on. My criticisms are that it does not have a built-in timer, it doesn't come with installation instructions, and some users have reported rust as an issue. Grunfos pumps are well known for their durability and can last for many years. One user reported that their pump lasted for an astonishing 24 years. This pump will do the job it's built for and it runs so quietly it's hard to tell it's on. The price on this pump is really low compared to other pumps, and it runs much less in price on Amazon than it does in the hardware stores. Although it doesn't come with a built-in timer, one can be bought for like 10 to 20 bucks, and it still costs less than other models available. The pump uses 25 watts of power, so it shouldn't make a huge dent on your energy bill. So the main concern I have for this pump is that it's made of cast iron. Although this makes for an extremely durable pump that can last for a long time, some users have reported rust coming from their faucets. And it's hard to tell where the rust originates from, if it's coming from the pump itself or if it's coming from an old water heater. It's just something to take note of and keep an eye out for if you experience this issue. So make sure to never run this pump dry or without nominal pressure in your system. The bearings in the unit require water flow and pressure to function. The pump does tend to run hot, but it's rated for 240 degrees, so it really shouldn't be a concern. Overall, the Grunfos pump offers you a great price and durability that can't be surpassed. Get a cheap timer and you've got yourself a great deal on a pump. Number four is the Taco Bronze Circulator Pump. So what I like about the pump is that it's extremely durable and reliable. It has sweat valves instead of threaded valves, and the direct drive lower power consumption does cut electric usage. My criticisms are that it does not have a built-in timer, it tends to run hot, and sometimes it ships with the wrong valve. So make sure that you get that sweat valve instead of the threaded valve. So the line of Taco Pump products is well known for its workmanship and durability. One user says that its pump has lasted an astonishing 38 years before needing replacement. So these are built for the long haul. The design is more compact than other pumps and it's made of bronze. This pump uses a sweat valve instead of a threaded valve. Sweat valves have a tendency to leak much less than its threaded counterpart, so to me that's a huge bonus. The manufacturer offers replacement cartridges, so if something does break in your pump, you can swap out the cartridge as opposed to purchasing a whole new unit. Overall, the Taco Pump is a highly durable pump and is a good standard choice. So an essential accessory that you will need is a water heater installation kit, and I suggest getting the Shark Bite. So the Shark Bite fitting makes installation very easy. The connections are done easily in tight spaces without the need for glue or solder. Just make sure to check the connector size and order the appropriate piece. I really recommend getting a mini Wi-Fi outlet. I suggest the GoSun mini Wi-Fi outlet. Uh, these little plugs are super awesome because you control your outlet from your phone anywhere in the world. So you can set a timer, you can share it with others, you can make a schedule. It's super easy to install. Just plug in, install the app on your phone, and follow the instructions. So that concludes my guide to the best hot water recirculating pump reviews for 2019. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. I really do hope that it was informative to you. I really hope that you like, share, and subscribe to my channel as I'm trying to grow my channel. And I'm also really trying to grow my website, MaximumOffGrid.com. I have a bunch of useful information there, a lot of useful information about water systems and water pumps and water filters. So if you want to head on over there and check it out, I would really appreciate it. I'd also love to hear some of your feedback or constructive criticism or comments about my video and about my website. So I hope you have a great day and stay tuned in. Thanks.